Hello, welcome back to Drive Driver Driven. I'm Humble and uh, we're back in the garage, but briefly. Uh, it's been a couple weeks, but I wanted to catch everyone up on sort of what's going on. Uh, the short answer is travel, lots of travels going on. Um, in the past five weeks, I've made three trips across the Pacific. Um, I was in Tokyo for Christmas, I was in Sydney for uh, work, first week of January, and I just got back from Seoul. So I am basically the embodiment of jet lag at the moment, uh, but that doesn't mean nothing is happening. Um, I have had the zero out for a test drive, and I'll roll some of that action later. But uh, quickly on the zero, uh, I wanted to mention a couple things that I've done that um, I didn't turn the camera on for because they were just really quick things. So let me spin the camera around and uh, kind of show you what I've done. So first off, um, just a nice little uh, roll bar mount for a GoPro. Uh, this is actually an ATV mount. I haven't used this yet. I was using a uh, different mount that uh, would attach here on the seat, which wasn't the best. Uh, what kept happening is the, the camera would slowly tilt over time until it's just shooting the dash, so not great. But I was able to get some good clips from it. Um, elsewise on the car, not too many changes since last I had the camera on. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned these wind deflectors. Uh, but I have these on the car and it does make quite a bit of difference on uh, wind buffeting on the driver and passenger. It just gets enough of the air curtain around the car uh, so that it doesn't absolutely just beat up your ears while you're driving. Um, I should say specifically that's at lower speeds, uh, you know, 60 miles an hour or less. Once you start going faster, they sort of fold in. Um, Elsewise on the car, um, the shocks I've been trying to tune, um, basically I went too soft and then I went too stiff and I've been slowly backing them off over time. Um, they're still a little bit on the stiff side so before I take it out next I plan on taking a couple clicks out of the front and a couple more out of the rear. Uh, hopefully getting close to that Goldilocks zone where um, it's not uh, bouncing or jouncing over bumps, which is what it's doing currently. Um, on the rear, and I would say this is an important thing for, well, any car that's done major work. So suspension, brakes, whatever, but especially kit cars where you've assembled everything from scratch or, or from parts, is to get the car out, get some miles on it, and then bring it back and do a nut and bolt. And uh, so one of the things that I didn't turn the camera on for was um, uh, I realized that I had set up the rear brakes incorrectly and more or less they just weren't functioning. Um, I, all the braking I had was actually out of the front wheels. Uh, the rear uses uh, Miata NB. So this is second generation Miata uh, uh, sport discs, which are a little bit larger, sport calipers. Uh, etc. And when I adjusted the brakes after putting everything in, um, I did it badly, uh, uh, which is to say just not correctly at all. Um, the, there is an adjuster on the caliper on the back that's hidden behind like a, a 14 mil kind of cap head bolt. Um, and there's a little four millimeter Allen screw in the back. And anyone who's done this before uh, knows exactly what I'm talking about. But what was happening is the, uh, uh, the pads just weren't really making contact with the rotor at all. And when they did, it would only squeeze down just barely. And um, after a couple of test drives, I noticed weird noises coming out of this corner. When I pulled the wheel off, I found that the caliper bolts had actually backed out a little bit. And then the caliper itself was loose, which explains why... All this brake dust is around the wheel here is because the pads were rubbing against the rotor just going down the road. So, got everything bolted back up properly and torqued the spec. Uh, got the brakes adjusted properly. And uh, now, of all things, like previously the e-brake wouldn't work. 
and now it's just like one click and it's solid. So uh, if anything, I might need to back it off just a touch more to get a little more travel out of the e-brake handle and to make sure that they're not rubbing, but it's night and day difference. Uh, so much so that I may have to adjust the uh, switch on the brake pedal so that uh, it actually turns the brakes on sooner rather than later, to, or to, rather to make sure that it's turning the brake lights on when I actually brake and not at all. So um, that's that. Uh, I've got about 300 miles on the car now, give or take, um, running some larger loops up through the mountains. Uh, that's why the car is just filthy at the moment. If I kick the exhaust parts out of the way here, that'll come in a future video, not for this car, but for the Ultima. Um, you can see there's just dirt all over the car. There's, uh, if you drive through anything like, uh, again, the mountains are, there's lots of sand and dirt on the roads from all the rains we've had in California. And it's just, all over the car and um the other thing i'll give this is that the uh, uh the shield here this additional windshield off to the side helps keep some of that off of you because without this what i found is your your leg actually sits right up here against the sill and you get wet from water being kicked up off of the wheel and it would just it hit your jeans here and you would just be wet so that's all done done and good um car's just dirty from all the driving um, it's super addictive. I, I cannot say that enough. The, uh, the sounds from the ITBs, um, uh, now that it's been tuned, just the rock solid torque from about four grand up is amazing. Um, I've gone and, you know, since we have it tuned on the dyno, I've come back now and I've reset the idle and I've rebalanced the ITBs now that we have a good clean idle signal to start with. And it is much, much happier when cold and idles a little bit higher when it's warm. Uh, again, it's done with the, uh, the lumpy idle that you might hear in some of the driving videos to a now more steady idle. But because of the big cam, that idle sits at about 1,000 to 1,100 RPMs. And that's just big cam problems. Uh, otherwise, like the the zero has just been a, a trooper with its break-in miles so far. Uh, I'm looking to get probably a couple hundred more miles, and then uh, I'm going to do an oil change, inspect the oil, uh, inspect the oil filter, cut it open, and take a look at it. And uh, I have a catch can in it as well, and I'm going to drain the catch can and see uh, how much uh, blow-by or, or oil vapor we're getting in the catch can. So on the subject of the engine, uh, let me talk about how the dyno day went really quick. Um, so I went to the usual spot, which for me is uh, Black Tracks. Uh, local dude, Jay is amazing. Um, everyone over there, uh, stand-up dudes. Um, Jay is the one who has tuned the uh, Ultima. Uh, he tuned the other yellow Ultima that has made an appearance uh, on my channel in the past. Uh, I had him tune the GBS, and he's also going to tune my friend Sean's GBS uh, in the not-too-distant future. So uh, for this engine, remember we built this engine on channel. It's a 2-liter Duratec. Uh, we put forged rods in it. It already comes with a forged crank. Um, I believe the pistons were uh, 11 to 1. Um, it got some hot boy cams, like stage three Brian Cower, Crower cams. And uh, it has the GBS 48 millimeter ITBs and the GBS supplied exhaust. And uh, what we found was uh, on the dyno, it made 150-ish uh, horsepower and 125 foot-pounds of torque at the wheels. But um, I'll throw the, the dyno graph up really quick. Um, one of the nice things about this is on about four grand up, we have a relatively flat torque curve, uh, which means the, the car is just going to keep pulling and pulling at the, uh, the same rate in that part of the power band, which is amazing. Um, 
But on the horsepower graph, and you can see it a little bit in the torque graph too, uh, starting at about 5,000 and then going up, you can see this oscillation, this sort of wave. So instead of having a nice uh, straight line, you see these waves start getting bigger and bigger, these oscillations. And what that is, is that has to do with the resonance uh, on the exhaust and the intake side. Much like you would have resonance in an instrument, like a trombone or a trumpet or something like that, uh, the engine is basically an instrument. Um, however, we've got something in the way on the exhaust. So you can see how yellowed the exhaust has gotten and that's because right here in the forward part of the muffler is the cat. Uh, I'm keeping an eye on this for the moment uh, because on Sean's car, his cat had basically unraveled and had been sent down the muffler. And it's obvious here that there is restriction. You notice how it's all discolored here. That means it's getting hot. And then it gets to the muffler and then past the muffler where it's open, it's just exiting. Um, this canister, uh, even after driving, is um, it's hot, but you can you can touch it. And then again, you can see some of the heat on the tip back there. Uh, I'm on the fence now, but what I might end up doing is uh, actually removing this exhaust and either replacing it with a similar unit that doesn't have a catalytic converter section in it, or just removing that catalytic converter section and uh, having just a muffler uh, on the back end of it. Um, really what I want to do is I want it to have the highest flow option to see if we can pick up some numbers up top. Um, again, on the dyno, we stopped at 7,000 RPM because of these weird oscillations, but you can uh, see, and I'll, I'll toss it back up here, at the top end, at 7,000 RPM, it starts to come back up. These oscillations start to add more power back. Uh, so what I'm hoping is that if we uh, remove the cat or add a more open exhaust, that we pick up some numbers and we're able to rev it out to 8,000 or 8,500. But um, we'll, we'll see how it does just with a more open exhaust first. So yeah, quick little update on the Zero. Um, no joke. I have been driving this thing a ton uh, to the point of sort of neglecting the other cars. I've, I had the Ultima actually out today uh, for a Cars and Coffee event uh, DWA down in Santa Cruz uh, for Morning Motors. If any of you guys saw me out there, uh, say hi. Don't you know? Don't be afraid to check out the car. I know I was running around, but uh, um, yeah, I'll always open the car up for anyone who wants to see it. Hopefully I'll be able to get some more content going, but I do have some more travel on the horizon. Um, as I mentioned before, it's been kind of on again, off again, uh, here a week, gone a week, here a week, gone a week. Uh, and it's going to continue like that at least until maybe late February or March uh, with uh, two more uh, big travels for me in February. Crazy travel this year. Um, it's really unusual for me. Um, I don't usually travel this much for work but uh, things are just coming together in such a way that it's uh, basically on the plane, on the road, and out and about. So uh, when I do have time at home, I'm gonna try and, and get some things going, uh, specifically updates on the Zero, because we are really at the end of the build. Uh, uh, I do need to get it for its final ref inspection, which I'm gonna try and schedule tomorrow. Uh, for a week that I'm here in February, and my temp tags actually do run out in February, so I need to get it done. Um, and then once that's final, there's a couple things, a couple lingering projects uh, for the Zero that need to get done, uh, like the, the side windshields. Um, I also have a uh, bikini top that needs to go on, which involves drilling the windshield frame, and got to be really careful about that. And then dealing with, again, the exhaust issue and uh, seeing what's there. Um, and then likewise, an oil change, a final nut and bolt, just make sure everything's good, and a proper uh, wheel alignment to set the track width and uh, the wheelbase length, because right now it's all question marks. I've just got a basic string alignment on it. So kind of a lot of rambling there, but uh, I just wanted to get you guys up to speed on what's going on and 
why updates might be a little sparse, uh, at least in the meantime. Uh, for now, uh, I want to leave you guys with some uh, driving footage, a few clips of uh, having some fun with the Zero around town and up in the mountains. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.